AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Clunker sales were completely misrepresented by the government. Chrysler dumps Hyundai and Mitsubishi in its engine deal. Toyota makes it official, no more new me. And we give you a look at the upcoming Hyundai Equus. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, August 28, 2009, and now the latest in the auto industry. Car sales under the clunkers program in the American market are so erroneous they border on the fraudulent. The U.S. Department of Transportation reported that the top 10 vehicles bought under the program were almost all subcompact cars led by the Toyota Corolla and Honda Civic. But analysts at Edmonds point out that the government counted sales according to the type of powertrain in a vehicle something that's never been done in the history of reporting automotive sales. Take the Ford Escape, for example. The front drive versions were counted separate from the all-wheel drive versions. When you count sales by nameplate, the way the industry's always done it, the list changes dramatically, and suddenly it's not dominated by compact cars. Which begs the question, why? Why did the government count sales in a way that foreign automakers and compact cars were the big winners in the clunkers program? You can get the full story by watching last night's AutoLine After Hours with Edmonds analyst Jessica Caldwell at our website right now. The Detroit Free Press reports that Chrysler has pulled down the logos of Hyundai and Mitsubishi at its Global Alliance engine plant in Michigan. That plant, which is operated by Chrysler, makes four-cylinder engines designed by Hyundai with machinery from Mitsubishi. The idea was for all three of them to use engines from that plant. But Hyundai's never sourced engines from it. All the four-cylinder engines it uses at its assembly plant in Alabama are sourced from Korea. And Mitsubishi's production has collapsed so much it doesn't need engines from the plant. Meanwhile, Fiat has its multi-air engine that it would love to put in that plant so Chrysler doesn't have to pay any royalties to Hyundai or Mitsubishi. Two weeks ago, we reported this was going to happen, and now it has. Toyota is ending production at the Numi plant in California. It will stop building cars there next March and will shift production of the Corolla to Canada and Japan, and the Tacoma will be moved to Texas. This is part of Toyota's global effort to cut up to 1 million units of capacity. Ford stopped selling the Crown Victoria to customers in 2007, and now the Detroit News reports the company will stop producing them for police departments in 2011. The company plans to offer a model of the Taurus instead, but police departments like the rear-wheel drive, frame construction of the Crown Vic, and the fact that most police equipment is designed for it. In fact, 85% of all police cars sold in the U.S. are Crown Victorias, so it'll be interesting to see if Ford can keep some of those sales or if police departments will look for other alternatives. Navtech, a major supplier of map data to automakers and portable GPS makers, just released the results of a research study. In Germany, the company monitored three types of drivers, those with nav systems, those without, and those with nav systems that feature real-time traffic updates. The study revealed that traffic-enabled nav systems can dramatically save time, around 18% on an average trip compared to drivers without navigation. The company says those savings add up to four days every year. CO2 emissions are also cut by 21%. And you know, even if those savings are only half true, that's still a pretty big deal. We have a new world record to report here, and it's not half-baked. According to Autoblog, the head chef at the Royal Plaza on Scott's Hotel in Singapore, along with a gang of helpers, built what they're calling Asia's largest race car made out of bread. That's right, the life-size F1 car is fashioned from 22 different kinds of bread. But it begs a whole bunch of questions. How much dough did it cost to make? Is it carb exempt? And in any event, I'll bet the car's creators are the toast of the town. Okay, I'll stop right now. Hey, can Hyundai really make a run at the luxury market? Coming up next, we'll take a quick look at the Hyundai Equus. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry.
Bridgestone. Hyundai's out to prove to the world that it is a serious car company, one that can take on the best in the world. Last year, it came out with the Genesis sedan, which served notice to everyone just how serious it is. Next year, it's going to bring the Equus sedan to the American market with an average price that'll probably settle in uh, north of $50,000. We just got a chance to test drive a Korean spec version of the car, and we'll have a full review coming next week. But here's a little taste of my instant impression of the interior of Hyundai's upcoming luxury car. My instant impression of the Hyundai Equus interior is that this thing's all about the back seat. Check it out. It even comes with an ashtray in the armrest. Sure ain't seen them things very much recently. You also get this nice little table where you could put your laptop or have a writing surface. You get a vanity mirror that's lit to see how handsome that you look. If you happen to think this seat's a little too close to you, no problem. You just move it right out of the way. And of course, on the other side of the car, you can control the sunshade on the window. And just to show you, this truly is a luxury car. It comes with its own jar of gray poupon. Like I said, we'll have a more complete review and driving impressions of the Equus coming next week. But right now, you can watch the latest episode of Auto Line Detroit. My guest this week is John Hoffaker of Alex Partners, which specializes in turning companies around. He talks about how the auto industry has been hammered by globalization, but that the industry is only halfway through the globalization process. You can learn more of what's in store by watching the entire show at AutolineDetroit.tv. And we're almost ready to go, but before we do, we have to cover this week's trivia quiz. We asked you to identify what car this is. And the correct answer is, it's a Peugeot RCZ. As always, we randomly selected this week's winner, and the winner is Lance Witt from Edgerton, Wisconsin. Congratulations, Lance. You just won this Honda Insight baseball hat. Across town and around the world, that'll do it for the top automotive news this week. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you Monday.